Hey guys and welcome back, this is James and today we are going to be making this leather tote bag. Now I always start off with oiling the piece of veg tan leather, that is vegetable tanned leather, and before doing that always grab a pair of plastic gloves. I'm using simple neat's foot oil for this as you never really know when you get your piece of leather how long it's spent uh, out in the air, out in the open. You don't really know what the conditions were in which it was stored. And I find it's, it's always, no, I find it's never a bad idea to oil your piece of veg tan leather once you get it out. I don't know if this really applies to all leathers. I know that I use it with veg tan. Um, yes, you can see the oil marks on it, but that just for me proves how much it needs to be oiled. Uh, the second thing I do is then mark out my different measurements here and the two main pieces for the bag, the front and the back, are going to be made out of uh, two panels which are 45 centimeters long and 35 centimeters wide. Both panels are pretty much the same, uh, so I decide to draw them on the back uh, straight from the start. Before starting any new project I like to remove my old scalpel blade and grab a new one. If you're doing this, make sure you always use pliers as these things are slippery and it would be a pain. Let's you know, it'd be, it'd be a real shame if you cut yourself at this stage. Um, I usually like to, ta to, to dye my pieces before cutting them, simply because this gives me a nice equal dye all around my piece. And if I have different pieces like back panels, side panels, front panels, pockets and stuff, they're all dyed pretty much the same way. In this case, I decided not to because I'm, I've only got one big piece of leather. So it's not really useful for me to do that. My dyeing process may be a bit strange here. As you noticed, I did oil it once more before applying a first coat of rough dye. And it doesn't look really good at this point because at this stage, I decide to mix half dye and half oil, neat sort oil, and apply it again. And the idea here is to get a finish that looks like it's got a sort of woody touch to it, a wooden feel by having streaks that are darker or streaks that are lighter. Right now, I am applying my homemade uh, leather wax, which is basically 50-50, neat's foot oil and beeswax. And the beeswax will help seal in the pores and really protect the leather, while the neat's foot oil makes the beeswax much more supple and pliable and workable. It does take a lot of work to get on and off, but the result is really satisfying and it works incredibly well. It's really cheap and easy to make and you can make tons of it. Um, so go ahead and try that out 50-50. Most people would say 60% neat's foot oil, 40% beeswax. Uh, I have to try that mix later, but I've got a batch of 50-50 that's taken me so long to use up that uh, for now I'm sticking with that. As you can see, I've now cut the two panels into basically two panels and I am taking out these corners the bottom of the tote bag will be sort of like boxed, so the corners will be tucked into each other and it will help create a more interesting line. Uh, as you can see, this is basically how it's going to all fit up. And this is what one of the side panels will look like, uh, more or less, once it's done. Before doing anything though, uh, you want to start punching holes. Now. There are many things you want to be doing uh, for this bag and the order in which you do them aren't necessarily important. I decide to cut these round holes first just to make sure that where I will fold, the leathers will crease nicely and they won't leave any weird creasing marks or it, it will just look better. Uh, then you want to prepare the edges of the leather which will be visible once you've, um, once you've sewn it all up, which is what I'm doing here with a quick coat of dye and then uh, waxing the edges, burnishing the edges to make them nice and sleek, which is what I'm doing now. You notice that I used a compass or I'm not sure how, uh, per, I'm not sure how you'd say it in, in, in English or American to mark down where I'm, I scribe down where my lines, where my holes are going to be. And that helps me uh, basically get really nice straight stitching. And I really recommend that if your edges are straight. If you haven't been able to cut your edges perfectly straight, then just grab a ruler, grab some kind of pricking iron or anything and trace your line nice and straight with the ruler. On the top of the bag, I have an issue. On the opening side, on the opened area of the bag, I have a slight issue. 
I want the top of the bag to be relatively rigid. I am not going to be adding any type of clasp or closure and I want the top of the bag to stay nice and straight. So what I'm going to be doing is doubling up the top of the bag. There are many ways of doing this, but I'm simply going to be sticking on a second small band of leather at the top of each panel and then sewing them together. And this will help me get a much more structured entrance or structured top to the bag. You notice that I burnished the bottom beforehand because I won't be having access to that. I scribe down where my glue is going to be, uh, more or less. I mean, it doesn't have to be perfect at this point. And then go ahead and apply a very light coat of glue. Once this is done and my holes are pricked and ready for sewing, this is what it all looks like. As you can see, uh, the top area I am going to be sewing twice. Not necessarily needed, but I just think for aesthetics, this is what I want. And you can see how that top band is going to be holding the whole thing together. For stitching, I'm using some fil de lin, fil de lin au chinois. It's basically uh, really good quality, very thin polyester thread. Now, I know most people, most you know, some people might not like the idea of polyester thread, but I find that it's overall neater. Um, it's just as resistant, in my experience, than any other thread. And the really great thing is once you've cut the ends off, you can just burn the ends and they will tuck in really nicely because it's polyester, it will um, melt very nicely. And this is what the stitching looks like. Obviously, this is saddle stitching all the way. As I said, it's very thin uh, wire of thread. And uh, so as you can see, it gives a nice pattern. This tote bag is going to be for a woman. So I decided to go with this thinner thread. My personal preference would be something a bit heavier in terms of threading, but as it's for a woman, I decided to keep it as light as possible. My stitching irons possibly are too big for this kind of thread, but I'm okay with that. At this point, I decided to start getting a move on with the straps before doing anything else, because I don't want to actually touch the panels if I can avoid it until the very end, and because I'm afraid of scratching them. My workbench isn't that big, and I'm always worried about scratching things. For the burnishing of these, I cheat a bit. Um, so I use tokenol or gum trag basically for the burnish as a burnishing agent. Uh, this helps sleek down the fibers and keep the fibers nice and tight. And uh, it really does help. And then I use a Dremel with an end bit. And yes, that is cheating, but that's what I do. Here I've taken the four corners that I've cut off the front and back panels and I'm going to do something which I have never done before. This is a complete test for me. Uh, my father-in-law made me a really nice little stamp maker machine thing and I want to make my maker's mark, uh, or at least apply my maker's mark to the bag. And because it's not really appropriate for leather, it's more, it's made more for uh, paper, it does, it can leave a slight edge. So my maker's mark, I want to cut it out and sew it on. And this is the first time I was trying it out and I'm really, really happy with the way it turned out. As you can see, that square edge is not perfect, which is why I will be cutting it out and sewing on the maker's mark. But in the meantime, that's the girlfriend. Uh, no, she's constantly cooking when I'm working in the, in the kitchen and she's constantly having me to taste things and trying to poison me, I think, but I've survived so far. Um, so as you can see, I'm going to be cutting out my maker's mark, burnishing the edges, making sure it's as straight as possible. And this is the very first time I'm doing this. It's a, I'm really pleased with the way it turns out. It was an interesting challenge. It does add a bit of extra work really to your piece. So unless you're doing something special, which in this case it was for me at least, um, I wouldn't necessarily recommend it because it takes too long. You can get maker's marks made for leather and they are much easier to apply than this and you can get them for uh, depends where you go, but they can be quite cheap. Or you can get uh, a kit where you have different letters and you can just assemble the letters into your name or whatever and use that. This may not be the easiest way, there may be better ways of doing it, but I'm actually really, really pleased with the end result. I think it adds something... It, it's silly really, but I find it adds a lot to the quality of the piece. Now comes the time where I decide to attach my straps and I figure out a approximately how far away I want them from the end of each this, each side of the bag. So I grab my ruler and make sure everything is straight and mark down my holes. The thread I am using, obviously, I always like to uh, thread it through some beeswax just before using it simply because, well, I'm told it protects the thread and I believe that 100%. Um, it also helps 
uh, from my experience, it makes the thread a slightly bit heavier and easier to use. I don't know. You'd I think you'd have to try it with and without to understand, I think, what I mean by that. Um, but I like using it simply because it does add a layer of protection to the thread. And the thread, even if it's saddle stitched, which is a great way of stitching thread and possibly the, the strongest stitch there is, even if it's saddle stitched, you really want to try and protect that thread as long as possible. This is what it looks like. Well, it's one half of the bag once it's all stitched up and you can see that contour appearing now and it's going to be quite a nice deep bag and I've used this contour before in a previous project similar to this one um, and I find it really does help instead of just having the two pieces of leather that are basically squares stuck together and, and sewn together and stitched together I find this really does help give it extra depth I don't know why because ultimately it doesn't really change that much um, but it gives it an appearance, it gives it a structure, it gives it something more. If I were to do this again, I wouldn't necessarily make it, uh, so I wouldn't necessarily cut out as much from the corners to make it a bit more sleek and a bit more feminine because this one is actually quite bulky when you come down to it. But in this case, I was still very happy with the result. As you can see, all it takes then is to uh, glue both sides together, stitch it up and burnish it, which is pretty much one of the last, last pieces in this puzzle, in this build. And yes, I am working in a tiny space and that's my girlfriend's bike in the background. Um, overall, I'm very happy with the way this bag turned out. I mean, right now you can see me preparing the edges. Uh, it was a surprisingly fun little project to work on and I certainly would recommend it for anyone who's um, having fun working with Leathercraft because it's a great way of making something that someone hopefully will cherish for a long time. Um, I certainly enjoyed it and the person this bag went to uh, told me or told uh, my girlfriend that she absolutely loves it. So I'm really chuffed about this. I'm really happy with the way the Maker's Mark came out. I'm really happy with uh, the overall build. Now, yes, there are many things as always that I would love to improve and that I will try and improve on in my future builds. But in the meantime, this is a very functional tote bag and I'm very happy with it. So hopefully you guys have enjoyed this video. Do leave me a comment in the description below to tell me what you think of this build, what you would have changed, what you would improve and what you uh, are inspired to make. And I'd love to hear your thoughts and I hope to see them all down there. In the meantime, thanks a lot, guys. And uh, I'll see you soon.